thanks so much for coming by. Y'all are so sweet. Listen, I did a video earlier this morning. And y'all, I don't know why. Some for, On Facebook Lives, you can choose your thumbnail. When you do a regular video on your phone and upload it, it won't. And the, y'all, the image that it froze on for me was like hideous. And so, anyways, so glad to be back on the screen with a normal face. And look, I went, um, I got some blonde put in my hair today. Um, thanks to Rebecca. And uh, y'all, I swear, if you don't think hairstylists are artists, think again. Because... The girl I used to go to uh, before we even moved about, well, I guess like 13 years ago, she would do just, I would go in there and say, do whatever you want. And she would just do the craziest things to my hair every time. And I'm so, I've looked high and low for another hairstylist like that since then. She finally found one who happens to be someone who went to high school with my sister. So I know her really well. But I went in there today and the first thing she said was, okay, today we're going to go blonder. And then I think the next time you come in, it'll be... September, October, so we'll add some brown back in. Then the next time we'll add different shades of brown and go more fall. And I'm like, you are speaking my language. I love it. So anyways, I feel like just a new person having my hair done. Um, I'm trying to get used though to the, the, I mean, it's really blonde, but I like it. So anyways, let me, um, I'm gonna pull this up on my other screen because I have a hard time reading the comments um, from my phone and seeing when they come up. And I would like to be able to see if you guys say something and be able to chat with you and answer a question or respond to whatever. And so I'm gonna try and do the little trick I did last time where I can pull it up on my phone. And, oh, there it is. Let me say I absolutely hate seeing myself on camera. So, as I get used to this, you guys are just going to have to just bear with me because it does not come naturally for me. So, anyways, listen, I promised y'all that I was going to share one of my favorite tricks when I am painting or on canvas. And this is something that, okay, so here's the deal. I am self-taught. I did take art classes in high school um, from ninth grade on. Once I got to college, um, just because I've shared a lot of, about this before, I didn't think that art was something I'd be able to do for a living. I didn't think anybody would pay me to do that. So I didn't consider it as something I could take in school. So I didn't take any art classes in college. Um, and I really regret it. I wish I had. Um, but now, thankfully, online, we can take as many art courses as we want. So I am, consider myself self-taught. Self um, but there are a few tricks that you kind of have to discover along the way. And um, years ago, people in their craft did not want to share their secrets. Um, I know when we, Jamie and I were decorating, decorative finishing, faux finishing, whatever you want to call it, that was the thing was you did not share any of your any of your resources any of your tips because you never knew if somebody was going to come and, and do it and steal your clients out from under you or steal your finish that you're known for that kind of thing these days though um thanks to i credit pinterest because that just changed everything it was a game changer for us um I want to say not in a good way because it, it didn't feel good at first, but it was a good, it good ended up being good because it forced us to think more and grow more and evolve in our business. So, um, anyways, thanks to that though, people are now sharing all of their tips and, and tricks and you can find all kinds of tutorials for just about anything online. And what's interesting about that is I've had to shift my mentality from not sharing secrets um, in the decorative painting world to more of a teacher mentality. And I gotta say, I kind of like it. I kind of dig it. It does make me a little nervous because I am an, ex well, I don't want to say extreme. That sounds really extreme. I'm an introvert. I was going to say extreme introvert and I'm not extreme introvert, but I am a natural introvert. So this is not something that is easy for me. That being said, to the trick. So here's one of the things. Um, I know I had someone comment earlier saying she wanted to learn more about um, 
painting acrylic on canvas. And listen, if you're here um, and you can hear me okay, if you will just do a little wave or give me a thumbs up, a like, um, if you will give me even your name and where you're from, I would love that. I would love to say hi back. If you're watching this as a playback, um, same, if you will give me your name and just say hi, I'd love to know who's watching. I really wanna get to know the other end of this camera and get to see who I'm talking to. Um, I consider this more of a community than I do just a page about me. So it really helps when y'all respond. And then also just a tip, the last Facebook Live I did where I shared my handwriting trick, I got a lot of uh, people who loved that trick. And here's the deal, when it's something, when you've got um, a video like this, if you share it, then it will be saved forever to your timeline and you can go back to it anytime you want. Because um, a lot of times you think you'll like something and you'll think, oh, I'll go back to that person's page and watch it again. But then you don't remember, wait, what page did I learn that from? How do I get there? Who's that person's name again? So if you share it, it will save to your timeline and it's something you can have forever. Um, hey Celeste, thank you for saying hi. Um, so hope you're all doing well today. It's Thursday and it's almost the weekend. So I am super excited about that. I had a kiddo that started school this week and last night he was really feeling it. He was tired and just trying to get back in that school routine and everything is just kind of worn him out. So I think he's really ready for the weekend. So anyways, one of my favorite things to do, you guys, my battery's low, oh no. One of my favorite things that I have learned along the way, and many of my artist friends with successful art businesses know this trick already and use this a lot. And some people do this different ways and have different methods, but you know, whatever way works, works, right? So I really, when it comes to painting, I know that there are rules and some of them are great as a foundation and great to follow, but I'm a firm believer that it's okay to break the rules because sometimes that's how you discover new things. So if this is breaking a rule to all of you traditional, formally trained artists, I am so sorry. But this is just one of the things that I've learned and this is how I do it and it works really well for me. So hopefully you will find it works for you too. Um, I've got my stack of canvases over here. You can't see them. I went to Michael's today. FYI, their, all their canvases are on sale. If you need some, they are buy one, get one free. So I'm trying to find some examples for you so I can show you how to do this. Okay, a lot of my pieces have, um, Oh, I hope you can see this. Have this texture. Here, let me turn this down. Maybe you can see. Does that help? Do you see the lines and the texture in here? A lot of my art has that. Um, it gives it that kind of um, oil paint appeal. Um, and I don't use oil paints, but people often think that I do with this type of art. Um, so you see here these lines and just this texture in the paint. So, one way to do that, there's two ways, and I'm gonna show you both of them. Um, the first thing that I do a lot, if I want to use, if I'm in the mood to paint with a brush, um, this is one of the ways that I will use this method. And again, um, a lot of people are joining, so when you join, if you'll just say hi, where you're from so I can know who's here and, and say hi back. And if you have a question, ask away. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have if I can answer them. Okay, so to get this look, I used, I use both a palette knife and brush when I paint, just depending on the mood that I'm in, in all honesty, or if it's a um, commission. Hi, Lashang, how are you? Thank you for stopping by. Um, so depending on what mood I'm in, I will use one of those two methods. If I'm going to use a palette knife, then I'll, I'll show you kind of how I prepare the canvas for that. Um, but when I use a brush, this is what I like to do. I will get one of my mediums 
and Liquitex is really, I mean, it's what I use and you can order this off of Michael's, um, off their website. You can go in their store and use the 50% off, 40% off coupon, whatever you have. Um, ooh, I'm glad you're ready to learn. Um, also off Amazon, Amazon has these. If you are a mom, I'm sorry y'all, there's like one hair that's like keeps falling, getting my eye. <laughs> so I hate to be that annoying person that always plays with their hair, but it's, it's getting caught in my eyelashes. Um, okay, you can order this off Amazon, which I do a lot because I have kids at home and it's not easy to load them all in the car and just hop on over. Um, yeah, I'm so sorry. I actually got a phone call and didn't know you could do that while you're on a live video. Um, anyways, so again, you can get these, oh, Lowe's, Lowe's carries Liquitex. Okay, hi Dan. I uh, did not know that. This is, I know Lowe's carries different types of things that you can use. I did not know they carried the Liquitex brand. And it does not have to be, oh my gosh, that is so awesome. I'm going to have to check into that. Um, it doesn't have to be Liquitex though. There are different brands and um, this is kind of like an undercoat, I guess. So it really doesn't matter to me what type you use. So this one in particular is... Flexible modeling paste. If you can see this right here. I need a manicure, y'all. Flexible modeling paste. And on the back, here's what's cool. Another little trick. Make sure you read the back because it will tell you if this can be used um, with paint. It will tell you the consistency, if it's really thin and, and fluid or liquid-like or if it's really thick. It will also tell you if it dries matte or gloss and if it dries transparent or opaque. Um, I use two and they both are completely different. One is opaque and one is, is not. Um, and I see these, this one really is, yeah, this one's a matte finish and the other is a gloss. So those are important to look into. If they don't necessarily, you can mix your paint into this and it won't really change the color if you use a little bit of it. Um, but for the modeling paste, I actually use this straight on my canvas. And um, what I do, let's hope I don't get this on my shirt. So you can see it actually looks a lot like um, caulk or putty. Um, I will just get a whole bunch on my palette knife and I use a big one for this and I've already got this is an already glazed uh, can I mean, I'm sorry an already guess of canvas so it's already primed and ready to go and I just slap this on and y'all this is the easiest thing in the world to do and this is how you get the textures underneath your art your painting and it just gives it that extra detail and that extra look of what an oil painting would have. And you can do it as thick, I hope you can see this, you can do it as thick or as thin. You can do straight lines all the way down. You can just do it messy. You can do a little pop, 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 pop marks if you want. And um, hello, Karen and Joyce, thank you for joining us. So really, you can just give this any kind of effect. Can you see here? Give it any kind of effect that you want. Karen, um, this the canvases that I use are already primed. Um, I like the gallery wrapped canvases and they come pre, um, pre-primed, so you really don't have to do anything as far as that goes. I do have a whole container of gesso, or gesso, how people say it differently. However you say it is fine. Um, and so sometimes I'll do that uh, just because a lot of people will say it just kind of helps the painting last longer. Um, but again, these are already, they come already primed. And so this also just, it's an extra layer of prime because it's just a paste that goes underneath your paint. So you just kind of get used to how you like to do it. There's no right and no wrong way. It's just the look that you like. 
you can do it in a little area of the canvas and you don't have to do the whole canvas. I like to do the whole canvas, but again, do it how you like. You don't have to do the sides of the canvas, but you can. I mean, listen, you're the artist, so you do it how you want. But this is just one of my tricks that I use pretty much every time I get out a paintbrush. Um, all right, and if you don't have one of these palette knives, even if you use paintbrushes, I do suggest that you get one. And here's another secret to Hey Jamie, hey Gail. Another important little tip and trick is when you're buying these knives, palette knives or paint knives, okay? The difference in a palette knife, I believe, I could have them backwards, switched backwards, I'm not sure. Um, I sure hate that this is tilted differently, but I messed it up when the phone rang. Um, palette knife is just straight, whereas a paint knife will have this little curve in the neck. And what that does is, as you're putting this on, it helps you not get your hand in the paint or in the canvas. Thank you, Karen. So, if you're just starting out with these types of palette knives, this, I would definitely start with one of these. It doesn't have to be this big. I like this size because it really just gets a good even coat when I'm using this method on any size canvas. So this is a good size to start with. Um, but here's my full collection. So I have all different sizes. Uh, these I use more for when I'm actually applying paint to a canvas and you see how it's just got that arched neck So it gives you room when you're on the canvas and your fingers won't mess everything up Here's the kind that doesn't have that it just goes straight and really this is good for when you are mixing paint colors in your palette um, Because you don't necessarily need to have that little arch you're not painting on a canvas this is just really good for getting in that paint and really making sure you're mixing up that color really well. So, that's a little bonus tip about paint and palette knives. The drying time, Diane, you know what? That's a good question and I don't know if that is on here. Uh, it dries slowly. So, I actually do like to um, do this. I like to prep my canvases in advance before I start painting with brushes using this method. Um, normally I will get my canvases and the night before I'll do this. And then that way the next day I can just come in and start painting. Um, but let's see here. It is a, flex it says it dries slowly to a very hard flexible surface. You can mix it with any acrylic color or you can apply it to paint to a dried surface. So there are lots of options for this. I mean, I know that there are many ways to use this that I have not even discovered yet, and I'm sure that they're all amazing. So I really, I mean, that might be something to Google or YouTube, what all you can do with this, because I will tell you, Jamie and I use something similar to this, not the same thing, and we buy this at Lowe's in a big, um, a big bucket of texture paint when we're doing a lot of finishes on walls and, and stuff like that to kind of get the same effect, interestingly enough. So that is number one of the two things I wanted to show you today. Again, this is flexible molding, modeling, sorry, flexible modeling paste. You can get these from Michaels. You can order them from Amazon if you wanna be like me and not leave your house. I will, um, when this is over, I'll put some links so that you can just store them and kind of keep keep knowing what I mean so you can know what the name of it is okay second method I like to use and this is when I'm actually painting with a paint knife Celeste how long have you been painting it's a really good question I have been painting well if you include the decorative painting that I do with Jamie which is cabinet painting and uh, putting glazes and fix, uh, finishes on walls. It also includes murals. We've done, I don't even know how many murals. I have been painting for 15 years. Well, no, let's say 14. Bart and I have been married for 15 years and Jamie and I started working together about a year after that. So 14 years is how long I've been painting and actually making money from it. Um, but I've been painting and drawing and doodling 
my whole life, as I'm sure most of you have. So, again, it's just something that in my wildest dreams I wouldn't have considered I could make money from. Uh, it took my sister and my husband both pushing me way out of my comfort zone to pursue this as a career. Praise the Lord that they did that. And then I met Jamie and she took me under her wing as far as uh, decorative finishing goes. But I have really been painting on canvas um, really for, I think a little over, I mean, I've toyed around with it for a really long time. But as far as painting and selling and building this business, it's been about a year or so, I think. Jamie could correct me on that because we kind of started doing it together. Um, so, uh, you would love to see some of the wall art. You would, well, uh, I wish I had more to show you. I've lost, my old computer died and all of our old, um, what, I don't know what the word is, our pictures, all of our old work died along with that. So, I do have quite a few, but I will tell you my very first, very, very, very first paying gig all by myself. This was right when I had met Jamie, so we hadn't really started working together yet. Um, but it was a 12 foot painting of Jesus Christ <laughs> in the Ascension scene. And I had, I was up on a, um, words have left my brain right now, you guys, I'm sorry. Um, anyways, I was up on something, scaffolding, thank you. And it was, I was like 12 feet in the air. Somebody here had a chapel they had built on their land and it was just a small building, but it went really tall. So I was by myself, first paying job ever, and I had to paint the Ascension scene. So, but let me tell you that whole time I learned so much because that was, I had no confidence. I'm telling you, zero confidence in myself. Um, I really don't know how I got the strength to actually do that. Um, but I did. And the whole time I just prayed that Jesus would paint through my hands because I did not know what I was doing. And y'all, he did. It turned out, it turned out really pretty. I don't have any pictures available right now. Um, but my very first card and business poster and everything had that on there. So I know it's around here somewhere. Okay, back to this little method. This is a second method using a, a medium is um, Liquitex is the same brand I use only because it's just what I had available to me. This is a gloss finish though and it is a super heavy gel. I love this. If When I start to get low, I run out and buy some immediately. I don't wait until I'm out because I use this all the time. Um, so this is for when I'm painting on a canvas using a palette or paint knife, palette knife, whatever you wanna call it. And the way I use this, I actually don't need a canvas to show you this, um, more of my painting palette. But um, I take my paint that I'm gonna use, and I, oh, I wish I had a smaller palette to show you. Maybe next time I'll be more prepared, y'all. We'll see. Don't count on it because it's probably not gonna happen. This is the palette I use. So this is an old, uh, it's actually got a sheet of paper in there and this is old, I haven't cleaned out yet. So what I'll do is I take the paint here and because this is, um, this is an acrylic color but it doesn't have a heavy body to it. It's not a thin paint, it's actually a really good paint. But I do like the thicker paint consistency. So that's why I use this. And I will um, take a dollop and I just put it on my palette like this. And then I'll take it over here with my paint color. I'm using the wrong, wrong tool for this. Let's use the right one. Okay, so I hope you can see this. Hello, Connie, thank you for joining us. And you just mix this, it does not take a lot, it really doesn't. Um, you just mix it in and you can't even see. I mean, you can't even see, it doesn't change the paint color. And I didn't probably load enough paint, but um, I'm about, I have no idea what I'm doing this canvas, I'm about to plop some yellow paint on it. 
Um, but anyways, so you see, okay, it gives it that thick, heavy body consistency. Can you see those ridges? The same ridges like what I showed you before in the paint. And this allows you to just build up those layers, which I love so much. And what I really like to use this in, sometimes I will just use this straight. You don't necessarily have to have a medium with this to make it thick. Um, there are also these types of paints. Can you see that? And they are already a heavy body, so they're thicker. You real, I never, I don't ever have to apply or add anything to those. But gosh, you are getting lots of my secrets today. And that's really not my secret, but they're just some I'm something that you would if you're just starting out. It's just something you wouldn't think of. Um, you can go to Lowe's again, Lowe's, Home Depot, Sherwin Williams, whatever paint store you like to use, and buy. Um, little quarts of paint, okay? These are samples because I wasn't sure how I was gonna like the colors. Um, if they, you know, turn into something I liked and wanted to use a lot of, if I use a lot of them, I'll go and I'll buy a full quart of it. But this is a sample. And so these are these are kind of thin, and that's when I really use that, uh, the gloss medium to build up the texture of those. And so whenever I use that, uh, ah, this is a good example. I used a palette knife to paint this. And I used all different kinds of paints. And I applied that medium, the gloss gel. Mixed that in with the paint. And you can see, I hope you can see, it gives it that texture and that sheen that just kind of looks like oil paint. And so it just adds a richness, I think, to the color and consistency of um, your paint before you apply it to the canvas. So, um, yes, I do. I paint with all kinds of paint. I paint with um, acrylic. I will buy the expensive paints if I need to, if there's a color that I love. Um, I paint with um, craft paints like these. Don't use these as often because um, they just don't, they don't, I don't know. There's nothing wrong with these, but they just don't, uh, the color is not as strong, if that makes any sense. And that's just because it's, an, it's a craft paint, that's why. This is what Jamie and I used when we um, would make our product line of well, we would use house paint because that's what we had a ton of, but we would also use this when we were writing scriptures out or doing fine like artwork and patterns on wood, on our frames and our quilt plaques and stuff. We would use this paint because it's thin and so it's really easy to use with like a stencil or something like that. So if I'm doing something like that, that's really what I use this for. I'll also use this to mix in with another paint to kind of uh, get a color that I want. So I'll use these types of paints and um, acrylic paints that you buy from the art store. This is another kind, Liquitex. Doesn't have to be Liquitex. There's another kind, um, let's see. Oh, Artist Loft makes a good one. Am I missing questions? Let's see here. What's the name of the gloss gel stuff? It is, I'm gonna put a link to all of this. Uh, this is gloss heavy gel Okay, and um, I Do not Let my studio be without this stuff because I just use it all the time all the time on pretty much everything So if painting on canvas is something you want to do and you want to use acrylics keep this handy If that's the look you like <laughs> um, Okay so those are the two mediums. These are the two secret things that are really not so secret that I wanted to share with y'all today. Um, keep them both at home or in your studio or wherever if painting is something that you're interested in, if you're just starting out in, I hope that these secrets help. Um, 
again, I mean, it really, it's, it's not, it's not, painting is just not rocket science. You can use anything you have to paint. Listen, they used to paint with tea and coffee and dirt and ash. I mean, <laughs> that's how painting started. So you can use anything you want, but a lot of the traditional classic trained school art students will tell you, you can only use the expensive stuff that they sell in art stores and that is fine, but you just don't have to. So these two mediums here are the two that I highly recommend. I am going to, um, in the comments, I'm going to put a link to all of this and that way you can just click on it. It will take you to Amazon or Michael's and you can order online. If you go to Michael's to buy your art supplies, make sure you sign up for the rewards because I went today and not only did I get my canvases, buy one, get one free. I had a 25% off coupon on top of that. So make sure you sign up for Michael's rewards and you'll get those sale deals. So, um, you, there's not a lot to learn really. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's fun to learn this kind of stuff. Every time I learn something new, it's just, it's fun. So anyways, um, I am so excited to share that with y'all. And if you use it, and if you paint something with these two things, oh my gosh, I would love it if you would come back to my page and share pictures of what you have done with these two things. Um, again, like I said, I really don't want this page just to be a Melissa Lewis art page where, you know, I'm all over. I really would love for this to be more of a community where we can all come and, and learn and just encourage each other because I, believe everyone's created with the creation gene in their body. I don't think it's something that some people are born with and some people aren't. I think we all have it. It's just whether we tap into it or not, whether it's something we enjoy or not, that we can really utilize it. So the more you use it and the more you practice it, just the better you are. And the more people share, the better we'll all be. So um, anyways, I hope that y'all enjoyed that. I hope it was useful for you. And I cannot wait to come back and do another. My phone is, all the little things are popping up on my phone and it's driving me crazy. Um, so anyways, y'all, listen, I've got to go get ready to pick my boy up from school. And then I gotta go get the babies and be a mom, put that mom hat back on. So y'all, thank you for being here. Again, don't forget, if this is something that you learned something from and you wanna, you're afraid you might not remember everything, if you share this video, then it will be forever on your timeline and you can refer back to it anytime you want to. Um, if you don't share it, that's fine too, I don't care. You can always come back here and on my page and, and find this, but um, it's a lot easier. Sometimes you forget where you found out something, I know I do, so it just helps to do that. It also helps other people um, discover these types of things too that aren't um, that don't like my page, because if you share it, then they'll see it and they might discover something new too. So share the share the knowledge. Um, thanks for being here. Thanks for introducing yourself and saying hi. And I'm I'll go back and see if I missed any questions. I don't think I did, but just in case, I'll look. Ah, oh, thank you, Diane. Um, thank you, Karen. Y'all are so sweet. Y'all really know how to make this introverted girl who doesn't like to be on camera feel good about it or okay about it anyways. Um, I hope to get better at it, but um, more than anything, I'm just happy that I can, I can help y'all. So listen, y'all have a blessed Thursday and I will see y'all soon. Okay. Bye y'all.